Hello. Oh. Yeah, I got lurgy, ain't I? Thank you, Mark. He had a cold only about three weeks ago. He was coughing and spluttering everywhere. And I never got it. I thought, hmm. I've got the better immune system, ducky, I thought. All smug. And then he starts with his coughing again last week. And he's only just got over a cold. And of course, this time, I've succumbed, haven't I? I've succumbed to his filthy cold, him coughing everywhere. I'm having to touch door handles and light switches that he's coughed on and touched with his hands. <sighs> so, this is what you're getting. This is, the, this is the video you're getting today. Rather than me disappear, I'm going to give you this video of me suffering. What date are we on? Hang on. Where's my eye patch? Oh, it's here. It's Tuesday the 19th of March 2024. It's 8.28 in the morning. Mark's gone to work. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm not, um, at the moment, I'm not doing my one meal a day because I'm taking extra vitamins. I'm boosting my vitamins and minerals and supplements. So I can't really take a lot of those on an empty stomach. So I'm having a, whatever this thing is, I need to stir it. I'm having one of these and I'm going to have some peanuts butter on toast. And I'm going to have about half a dozen vitamins. And then I'm going to have a, a ginger shot, a little can of ginger and juice. It's very good for the throat. Um, gets rid of the nasties, I think. It, it burns, it burns, it does. Um, but it's, um, it seems to be good when you have a sore throat. Um, ginger is very good and um, turmeric as well. Here's a ginger shot I'm going to have later. It's 100% juice, not from concentrate. It's organic, an organic ginger shop. It's from this shop called Lidl. Lidl, I think. Um, I went to Lidl on Saturday with Mark. This can contains one juicy apple, one large chunk of ginger, one quarter of a tangy lemon. And they also do this in ginger and turmeric so I bought two of these and two of the ginger and turmeric they're in the chilled part with the takeaway sandwiches if you fancy trying some yourself from Lidl or possibly Aldi also sell a similar thing I started watching these well I haven't started I have been watching these we're in for all sorts I mean the latest I heard America is going to be gone this year, more or less obliterated. Half of it will be underwater and half of it will be under, under, on fire. So we'll see what happens. If it hasn't happened by the end of April, we'll know that was another load of bollocks. So apparently there's a super volcano under Yellowstone Park. And uh, that's going to erupt and that'll get rid of half of America and there's going to be floods getting rid of most of the other half. I mean, there's been enough a disaster movies hasn't there um, based in America there was that one deep impact which I've seen a few times where this asteroid supposedly hits the earth and um, obliterates a lot of places but you know it wasn't an extinction 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 oh, oh can't speak it wasn't an extinction level event um, but yeah, it caused an awful lot of death and destruction. There's been loads, isn't there? I'm sure you can think of loads. So perhaps there, perhaps it's going to happen. I don't know, but I'm thinking. And then I'm looking at looking at financial videos. There's this one. I think they call him Sasha. I mean, I've, I've, I unsubscribed to him last night because I was watching a man called Neil McCoy Ward. Um, who's, who's buggered off to the Isle of Man. That's where he lives now. Um, so he's probably neighbours with that big Clive bloke. So, um, 
he was talking to this American saying there's going to be a huge crash, the stock market's going to plummet, there's going to be hyperinflation, you better stock up on your tinned food, buy gold and silver, um, it's all doom and gloom, we will get through it but there'll be a lot of casualties. And then this Sasha bloke, who I haven't trusted really since day one because he wears a black top most of the time and it's covered in bits. I'm thinking, you're going on YouTube mate, you've got quite a big channel, put some clean clothes on. I mean, I'm only talking to a few folk here, but I do have, you know, I'm not feeling well, but this is this top is clean on today, so is this. I've got clean underpants and socks. I have, these jeans aren't, you know, these are a few days old, but you're not supposed to wash jeans all the time. But, you know, no matter what, even if I'm not appearing on YouTube, folks, I always put clean pair of pants and socks on every day. To save on the washing, I have been wearing these tops maybe twice, sometimes thrice, if I've not been overexerting myself. But, um, <coughs> pardon me. So he's, you know, he has bits of hair and bits of crumbs and bits of his dinner down his front. And I'm thinking, show some respect to your viewers, Sasha, and just put on a clean t-shirt. I'm sure you can afford it. So I've just unsubscribed to him. I'm quite fickle, folks. I'll just... It just takes one thing for me nowadays. I'm thinking, so I'm just letting go. I'm thinking, sod it. There's nothing I can do. You know, was this one man who's, who's buggered off. He was talking to Neil McCoy Ward. He's buggered off to, where is it, where the, not, the rich people, Saudi Arabia or that other place, you know. He's buggered off there. And he's saying, oh, the only way you can survive what's coming, you need a house with, its, with some land so you can grow your own food and you need to produce your own electricity and you need to, to have money to buy gold and silver. And, and I'm thinking, what's the point? Most people can't do that. I'd love, I'd love to be able to find and have the money to get some remote place. It would still have to have all mod cons. I'd want my utility room. But I'd, I'd like a place that's a bit more remote, with some land, maybe have a few nice chickens and grow me veg. I mean, I'd have to get someone to live with me who knew how to do that because, you know, apart from watching The Good Life, I have no idea what you're supposed to do. You know, how on earth do you start growing enough to sustain yourself? And, you know, so I'd have to get Pally with someone who really knew what he was doing, preferably a right big sexy hunk who adored me and he can whisk me away from this suburban, I won't say hellhole, <laughs> it's not, it's not a hellhole, from this suburban box and um, take me, take me away and be out there, you know, digging my soil, chopping me wood, you know, a great big hunt with big, big biceps, protecting me with a gun, having me dogs and um, eating all organic food we've grown our own. Obviously, I will I'll, we'll have chickens for uh, the eggs, but I won't, um, I won't be raising cows and goats and whatever to eat. Couldn't do that. Might have the odd donkey or something as a pet um, or an alpaca or five, you know. You know, that's nice. But I'd have to have the house would still have to be all mod cons, you know. Um, and just be far enough away from if the the poo poo hits the fan, far enough away to be protected from that. Um, but still near enough to be able to get everything I want delivered. That's you know. So if there's any any six foot five unks out there who know how to start small holding who wants to live with me, then, you know, comment below. You know, I'm open to all offers. Anyway, we, um, Mark and I, yeah, I'm still with Mark. Mark and I went to Hebden Bridge on Saturday, which was a nice, we went fairly early. Um, you have to get there early um, because it's parking, well, we always park. I'm surprised the council haven't started charging, but you can park sort of on the road Instead of parking in Hebden Bridge and paying, you can park on the road to Hebden Bridge. But if you get there too late, it's very, you know, you find it's trouble to get a parking space. So we went there 
I think we left home about 10. So we got um, easy to park, but you, see, you know, it was a five minute walk or so into the centre of Hebden. Mark had some vouchers I gave him for Christmas from this cheese shop he likes. So he still had about £15 odd <coughs> to spend on, <coughs> on cheese. So we went to, uh, just we looked around the shops. Last time we went, we had the dogs and it wasn't, you know, can't really do much when you've got the dogs in tow. Although you can, dogs do, are allowed in a lot of shops in Hebden Bridge. <coughs> so I went into Hebden Bridge and looked in some shops. Hebden Bridge is lovely and it's just down the road from us so and lots of independent shops um, you know organic organic shops for your, your organic veg and your organic honeys and your health foods and there's sort of gifty shops selling sort of ethnic -y things and Hornsey pottery remakes you know there's this you can buy Hornsey pottery now. It's sort of like reproduction Hornsey pottery. There's a company that sell it. I think it's under Hornsey pottery, <clears throat> but it's not Hornsey. It's not the original. So we, you know, and Mark was desperate for a piddle. So we had to go and sit in this cafe. So I sat outside when he went in for a piddle. And when he came out, I said, right, I don't want anything to drink. Let's just go. But he said, I've ordered. I said, well, you didn't come and ask me what I wanted. I've ordered you an Americano. I said, I don't, you know, I've had an Americano from this cafe before and it was horrible. Anyway, we went in and had it. He had some cappuccino thing. I had a little bit of the bitter Americano. But I didn't pay for it, so I thought, you know, just because he was desperate for a piddle, you see. I said, why didn't you go before we came out? I didn't want to go then. So anyway, we did that, walked about a bit. Oh yeah, and he had to go for another one. That was it, yeah. He went, <coughs> he went for two piddles. We weren't out more than two hours. So we had his first piddle in this cafe where we had to buy coffee. And then a bit later on, he said, I need another pee. So then he went to the library. So I walked around the market bit in Hebden Bridge on my own. Well, he went to the library, found himself a library book and had a piddle. I really didn't think at this age I'd be I'd be with someone who had to piddle every two minutes. I've had to rub cream on him in places where I didn't want to rub. Oh, I feel sick. I put I said I'm not touching your bare skin, and I had to put gloves on. I was like, oh, oh. Right, anyway, so yeah, it was a nice, it was a nice, um, apart from him piddling everything, it was a pleasant little jaunt. I don't think I bought anything. No, I didn't buy anything in Hebden Bridge. Mark bought, uh, he spent £24 on one pair of socks and then another about £20 on a pair of gloves from this hiking shop. So that was Saturday. So we went to Hebden Bridge and then I think Mark went for a nap. I couldn't have a nap. I was downstairs with the dogs. And, and then it was time to go to see Lee Francis live. Lee Francis, you might know or not, he is the man behind that awful Keith Lemon character. And back in the earlier 2000s or so, he did a show called Bo Selector. He's also done other shows, Celebrity Juice, um, shopping with Keith Lemon. He did some spoof film show with Paddy McGuinness. Oh, Molly. Um, pardon me. He's done all sorts of lowbrow stuff. But I, I did enjoy Black Bow Selector. <coughs> Short while ago, he had to make a grovelling apology for his black face. You know, so I, he got a lot of stick on X or whatever it is, Twitter and Instagram, when he apologised. <clears throat> because Trisha Goddard and uh, Craig David weren't too happy with his portrayal of them. They didn't say anything at the time, I don't think. I'd never heard of Craig David until Bo Selector. I mean, it was just clearly, his Craig David was just a silly parody, a silly caricature. I mean, I thought Craig David pissed his bed had a colostomy bag with some leads and had a peregrine, peregrine falcon as a pet. 
I mean, that's how he portrayed Craig David and uh, Trisha Goddard. She was always going around offering people rice and peas. But they weren't really blackface anyway. I mean, he did Michael Jackson, and Michael Jackson was whiter than anyone at that stage because Mike, the Michael Jackson mask he had was pretty white because obviously as Michael grew older, the, he got whiter. And then um, um, he did Mel B, you know, I'll do Mel B from Leeds, buy my book. And Mel B was, ooh, crab paste, you know. You'll know what I'm talking about. Some of you watching will think, what's he doing? Going like that and sniffing his hands and going crab paste. Well, this is what he did as Mel B. And Mel B actually went on his show. I think they used to work together at the Yorkshire Evening Press or something, because he used to work there back in the day. He's from, he's from Leeds, Lee Francis. So anyway, I got myself all worked up because I was on the front row on my own. I only managed to get one ticket initially, and that was for a meet and greet, okay? And it was £87 or something. But Mark said, oh, he'd like to go. And I found him a seat up on the balcony with slightly restricted view for 30 odd pound, 36 pound or something. So <coughs> we've got those tickets booked. So we went together, but then I, I had to go in one door for the stalls and he went in another door for the balcony. So we didn't sit together. So I was right on the front row, quite central, on my own, obviously I was surrounded by folk. And I was worried that being on the front row of a comedy thing, you might get picked on. I've been, I've been mentioned in that same theatre by another comedian, but I was way up top and I just kept, I kept quiet about it. But I've all, you know, ever since that happened, I'm a bit nervous about going to places. I was on the, in the same theatre to see Barbara Dixon a few weeks ago, front row, but I'm thinking it'd be quite okay. Barbara Dixon's hardly gonna register anyone in the audience. She just does a, does a singing as a bit of a chat, but she's not likely to point at people, point out their dress sense, point out their, facial features she won't do that so i was quite happy to sit on the front row to see babs so it's on the front row there was a middle-aged couple this side and another couple this side another folk so i sat there and um i felt better about it because i went on to key not keith lemon lee francis website and because i knew there was some audience of participation there's something involving popping balloons with a phallic shaped object and there was going to be this little, sort of little quiz show thing. And I thought, oh, he's going to pluck me out. But when I read that you had to express an interest and, and send a photo if you wanted to be involved, I thought, good. Because, and there's also a section where a member of the audience read a story to his character, the bear, when his tail pops out. A lot of this will be going over the head of a lot of you folk. But anyway, he plays this bear who gets read a bedtime story in his treehouse and it's quite erotic. Well, it's not erotic, it's a smut. And then his tail pops out of his fur. So he got a local woman, but she must have pre doodled because it was all re prearranged. She didn't pluck her out from the audience. So after I, I read all that, I felt a bit, bit better about it. I was a bit nervous about it, thinking, right, he's not going to call me out. Um, one man, it was three people, it was um, Lee Francis, this other bloke who does stuff with him on on telly, and then this woman who was quite a talented singer. <clears throat> well, they all did the mask thing, you know, they did the both select mask thing. And the whole thing was interspersed. So when they, they did a live sketch with the masks, and then it would go dark, they'd run off to get changed, and then the big screen would show clips. The highlight for me and for Mark was... Um, they did, he did some Gogglebox characters from, you know, present day Gogglebox. The brother and the sister from Blackpool. Um, and it was sort of implied that they were having it off because the brother was sniffing, sniffing his sister's um, underwear. And, you know, this man is 50, right? He's still doing jokes about masturbating, bumming, um, poo, uh, etc. He did throw some poo in the audience. It went over my head. I didn't manage to catch it. He was playing Joe Wicks, uh, doing some exercise. We had to get up and do some exercises and we had to, we had to feed the pony. I've no idea what that is. It, it was, I think it was something smutty, feeding the pony. And then we had to do this sort of thing. <sighs> yeah. I went along, do you know what folks? Because I was on the front row, I smiled and laughed 
and went along with it more than I would have done had I been higher up because I'd say to be generous 60% of it was okay 40% of it was filler <coughs> and not very funny <coughs> anyway before the show started the woman sat down next to her husband she was next to me and she said oh why have you got seats here blah blah you know blah because she was worried about being dragged into the show and i told her i said oh, it's all right you had to pre-register on his website if you wanted to get involved you know you had to sign up and say you're willing to do this so it's unlikely to blah blah and then they had the meet and greet and they didn't realize she didn't realize it was meet and greet either so they actually went to the meet and greet to do the meet and greet though i had to be there the show was supposed to start at half seven it didn't start till after eight o'clock but to do the meet and greet i had to be at the theater for quarter past six so from quarter past six to half past six i had to go to the theater um, and sort of register and show my ticket for the meet and greet which happened before the show but Mark was taking me and he didn't have a meet and greet ticket so we'd be hanging around for ages so I didn't do it we just turned up we got there for about quarter past seven we sat down about quarter past seven the show didn't start to about eight so anyway <clears throat> they had the meet and greet and I said oh well I couldn't get here in time blah 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 and I said, oh, what did you get? Because apparently you get a signed photo or something. So she showed me, she got this bag and she showed me this photo. And I said, oh, I, want, I said, I'll have to see if I can pick mine up later, you know, after the show or something. And she said, do you want mine? Because they had two. And I said, oh, thank you very much. So she gave me. So I actually got, I got what I should have got. This is all you get. So I could have met Keith Lemon, not Keith Lemon, Lee Francis. <clears throat> this is Lee Francis looking slightly more attractive. He's got silly long hair. It's all plaited at the back. He's ginger, folks, you know. So this is what you got for the meet and greet. You got to meet him and you got this. That's his signature. Just there. And that's a photo. Just wearing everyday clothes. You see? And there's various characters. So Bo Selector, I did enjoy Bo Selector. It was a, a while ago. And the most recent thing is why I found out he was doing this tour. Because I came across randomly, I think it's on Instagram, he plays Amanda Holden's Nan. Myrtle. Which I had no idea he'd done this show, and most people probably hadn't, and you may not be aware of it. If you want to watch it, it's on the Channel 4 catch-up. It's called The Holden Girls. Basically, Lee Francis plays Amanda Holden's nan, who goes to live with her in London. And I quite like that. I enjoyed that, actually. It wasn't, as, it wasn't, really, it wasn't all the toilet humour and smut and throwing of faeces. Um, and Amanda Holden, like her or loathe her, she's a good sport. You know, she's, she's, she's okay to take the piddle out of herself. And I saw her live in the Palladium a few years ago, you know, in a panto, and she was very good in that. So anyway, he did, the, he did that character Myrtle on the stage, which was okay. But yeah, it was hit and miss. There were some funny bits, some bits that were crude. There was Anton Deck, um, where... I don't, know, I don't know which one's which, but one of them gets um, an, a TV award shoved up his arse. They used to do it in the show, in, in Bo Selector. They'd go behind a screen, so they did this live. They went behind a screen, so obviously this was a pre-recorded thing. And you see a silhouette of Antor Deck. It was the one with the big forehead, I think he gets the bumming. And then the, the other one is, is shoving this TV Choice Award or something up his bottom, and you see this, and then it gets stuck up his bottom. And then someone has to run on, and you see them coming behind and then they try and pull it out and they eventually get it out and they come round and he, he came out saying, oh, do you want to touch it? And some woman from the audience, not only did she touch it, she licked to the end of it. I mean, clearly it not really been up his bottom, but still. And then they had the real Keith Lemon because he lives, he lives here, the real Keith Lemon. 
he was in the audience and apparently he didn't know. So the two people that were supposed to come on from the audience, um, which were members of the public, they were replaced by two of his school friends, Keith Lemon and this other bloke. So they came on and I think he was genuinely surprised by this. So um, these two denied Detroit the chance of two regular people getting a chance to go up on stage. So they stole that from them. So they had Keith Lemon, the real Keith Lemon, um, and some other man, and they just did this silly quiz show. And then they, they were bursting balloons using this big tube, yeah, that sort of foamy tube with nails on it. And they had it strapped to their torso. So it was sticking out like this. And then the other man was throwing balloons up in the air and they had to burst as many balloons by thrusting so it's about effing a balloon, you know. It was all a little bit... Lee Francis is 50 now. I mean, that might have must... I mean, it was a lot of it, to be honest, for me, was the sort of stuff I remember doing at school. It was that sort of humour. There was some good... You know, I'm not saying it was completely rubbish, but a lot of it, you're thinking... You should have grown out of that. I did read some reviews. I decided normally I don't bother... Uh, reading reviews <clears throat> before the show, but I wanted to be for for forewarned is forearmed. So I read quite a few, but they were from sort of snooty papers like the Guardian, and of course they looked their noses, looked down their noses at it. But after reading the reviews again, I think they're fair. But all in all, you know, <clears throat> it was a night out. There was nothing on telly. It was somewhere to go. It was fine, but I wouldn't bother again. You know, and to be honest, I said to the woman, well, I don't, haven't really watched much he's done since Bo Selector. And she said, no, I haven't. So possibly a husband that sort of got the tickets. She didn't laugh at everything. There was a couple next to me this side. They were laughing at everything. But the, the lady next to me um, wasn't laughing at everything. And I wasn't. But you felt obliged. As I said, you're right on the front. I made eye contact several times with him. And the, the lady that did some singing and stuff, she was good. Jessica or somebody, she was good. And then they had another bloke for support, you know. There were three of them. So, you know, all in all, <clears throat> well, what score out of ten? I'll give them a six, and that's generous. Six out of ten. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, that, that'll have to do for this content, so... That's my review of Lee Francis Live and our trip to Hebden Bridge. And that's it. So, it's some content for you, isn't it? I'm sure I'll be okay for the next video. Um, I don't know what that'll be. You've still got, of course, the Lundby, the Lundby Dolly House. That's, I've made several of those videos. So whatever happens, if I die tomorrow, they're, they're scheduled to go live. So you'll still see them. And if you don't see anything after those are finished, then I've probably kicked bucket or something. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you all to use a to use a Lee Francis phrase. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. Bye for now. <laughs>